Thank you. Good morning. My name is Tim Royce. I'm the president of the Canadian Automobile Dealers Association of Canada. Our over 3,200 members sell and service vehicles, all kinds of vehicles, in nearly every community in Canada and collectively employ over 160,000 people. In many ways, the transition to electric vehicles is progressing well. In Canada, there are numerous and exceptional battery electric vehicles available for purchase. These vehicles can be ideal for many families and we believe consumer demand will continue to grow consistently in future months and years. However, the hard truth is the coming federal mandate cannot succeed without Canadian consumer acceptance and the right market preconditions. Canadians expect certainty that they can afford, use and charge their EVs in a manner that suits their different lifestyles and geographical requirements before making one of the most important purchasing decisions in their lives. Further, with the current high interest rates and high inflation severely impacting consumer affordability, many consumers lack the means to purchase EVs, as evidenced by the rising inventory levels on our dealer's lots today. Instead of attempting to dictate what individuals have to purchase, we suggest government to focus on creating the right set of circumstances to stimulate demand. It is important to note that dealers across Canada are investing hundreds of millions in charging infrastructure and technology to lead the transition to electric vehicles. This is on top of the billions spent by Canadian and worldwide vehicle manufacturers. The federal government needs to produce a realistic and flexible plan that takes into account the vastly different economic and geographic realities of Canada. Canadians living in rural and northern communities will face more difficulties with the transition to EVs due to prolonged periods of cold temperatures that affect the range of battery electric vehicles as well as the substantially longer average distances they need to travel. This is not a simple economic issue, but a survival issue. Rural Canadians will be hurt the most by a mandate approach. Any EV sales mandate needs to be tied into real-world progress on public charging infrastructure, grid readiness, and consumer incentives. Regulating Canadians to buy EVs they can't afford or charge will be a Made in Canada policy failure. Let's get this right. I now turn the podium over to Brian Kingston of CVMA. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Brian Kingston, President and CEO of the Canadian Vehicle Manufacturers Association. Next week, the federal government is expected to announce its final zero emission vehicle sales mandate. The mandate will dictate what vehicles Canadians can and can't buy with a target of 100% ZEV sales by 2035. Automakers are committed to electrification. Since 2020, Ford, General Motors, and Stellantis have announced investments in Canada of nearly $15 billion, the majority of which is dedicated to ZEV assembly and the battery supply chain. The number of ZEVs available to Canadians has increased exponentially, from three models in 2012 to 77 models this year in every vehicle segment. An additional 41 models are expected in Canada next year. EV inventories are at record levels now, with the average weekly inventory increasing 146% year over year as of November. This has enabled EV sales to increase, reaching 12.1% of new vehicle sales in the third quarter of 2023. Rather than micromanaging vehicle sales across Canada, mass adoption requires urgent efforts to address affordability and charging challenges that are facing Canadians. According to Environment Canada's own analysis, the forthcoming regulation will have a disproportionate and negative impact on low-income Canadians, rural Canadians, and northern Canadians. There is an average price gap right now between internal combustion engine vehicles and ZEVs of $14,000. The current purchase incentives available to Canadians do not close this gap. Stronger incentives equivalent to what are offered in the United States are required to address the affordability challenge. For those Canadians that are able to afford ZEVs, the next challenge they face is a lack of charging infrastructure. According to Enercan, 442,000 public chargers and 2.2 million multi-unit residential chargers are required by 2035. 
there are currently only 25,000 public chargers available to Canadians and no plan to close the gap. The Commissioner of the Environment and Sustainable Development came to the same conclusion, quote, there remains a large gap between the current number of charging stations and those needed by 2035. The Commissioner also found that if the number of charging ports does not keep pace with the ZEV sales targets, there is a risk that these targets will be unachievable. Right now, approximately 6,000 public chargers come online annually across Canada. To reach the target the government has established, we would need to see 35,000 new chargers built every single year until 2035. And these challenges are not unique to Canadian consumers. The federal government has established its own target of converting 80% of the federal fleet to ZEVs. Today, less than 3% of the fleet is electrified. And at the current rate of deployment, the government will reach just 13% by 2030. The forthcoming ZEV mandate will leave Canadians out in the cold. Fortunately, there is a better way. We're calling on the government today to help Canadians make the switch to electric with the supports required, not mandate what they can and cannot buy. Thank you. I'd like to invite David Adams. Thanks, Brian. My name is David Adams, President of the Global Automakers of Canada. I'd like to echo some of the comments that my colleagues have already made. The GAC members share the government's net zero goal. We are committed to achieving that goal through the decarbonization of our products and accelerating the transition to electrified vehicles. Our industry has demonstrated an unwavering commitment to this transition, with Bloomberg just reporting that more than $1.6 trillion has been committed to, uh, to that transition to date, and there's more to come. Success on meeting the net zero targets will largely depend on the same level of ambition with respect to the de demand side policy for Canadian drivers to seamlessly make the switch to zero emission alternatives. Our members will be responsible prov for providing the zero emission vehicles in order to meet the aggressive ZEV targets under the imminent regulation. However, as you have heard, producing the products is only one piece of a very complex puzzle. For mass consumer adoption of zero emission vehicles in all segments and for all regulated parties to succeed, we need a comprehensive ecosystem supported by government to address affordability, to maintain the ZEV purchase incentives and to avoid counterproductive luxury taxes until price parity is reached. We require widespread charging infrastructure that's visible, available, reliable, and that operates at convenient speeds. We need further education and awareness to ensure that customers are compelled to make the switch. It is imperative that in 2024, a long-term forum be convened with governments, auto manufacturers, and consumer representatives, as well as energy providers, to table and mutually address consumer adoption barriers on the ambitious road ahead to 2035. I would note that out of all of the countries that have committed to a 2035 ICE ban, those countries only represent about 19% of global vehicle sales. It will be important to have a transparent and ongoing review process as we move forward to, for the, towards the legal, legal regulatory targets, along with the willingness of the government to course correct if the targets prove unattainable due to external conditions. Thank you very much for paying attention to us this morning. Thank you.